أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولو ترى إذ وقفوا على النار فقالوا يا ليتنا نرد ولا نكذب بآيات ربنا ونكون من المؤمنين بل بدا لهم ما كانوا يخفون من قبل ولو ردوا لعادوا لما نهوا عنه وانهم لكاذبون وقالوا إن هي إلا حياتنا الدنيا وما نحن بمبعوثين ولو ترى إذ وقفوا على ربهم قال أليس هذا بالحق قالوا بلى وربنا قال فذوقوا العذاب بما كنتم تكفرون هذا ألف مدى Okay Since this cough has a shadda on it We are stopping here We have to press it بالحق Like this قد خسر الذين كذبوا بلقاء الله حتى إذا جاءتهم الساعة بغتة قالوا يا حسرتنا على ما فرطنا فيها ما فرطنا فيها وهم يحملون أوزارهم على ظهورهم ألا ساء ما يزرون صدق الله العظيم
Say, O Ahlul Kitab, do not commit excesses, exceed the bounds in your religion. Do not overstep the limits by regarding Isa as Allah and do not follow the wishes, baseless views of a nation, your forefathers who were astray, who led many astray and who strayed from the straight path of Tawheed. Those of the Bani Israel who committed kufr were cursed on the tongues of Da'ud and Isa the son of Maryam. That was because they were disobedient and they overstepped the limits of their religion. Among the reasons for which they were cursed was that they never prevented each other, did not abstain from the evil that they used to carry out. Evil indeed was that which they did, not preventing each other from sinful acts. Failing to stop evil when able to do so is a major sin. You will see many of them befriend the kuffar, the mushrikeen and other people opposed to Islam. Evil indeed is that sin and false beliefs which their souls and send ahead to the akhirah for them. It is because of this that Allah became angry with them and they shall remain in punishment forever. Okay. The previous verse, it is very important to understand this concept. Uh, a person who has authority over others, whether he is a boss in a company or he is a father or a mother and he has uh, influence over his uh, children and uh, a husband, he has influence over his wife in any way if a person has any influence of others even a, a person who is very famous and many people are listening to him he has also influence on, on many other people so whatever authority a person has he has this duty to exercise his authority in order to prevent uh, others from sinning from committing the sin this is his responsibility so as a person who has influence over others uh, he has to educate them and he has to stop them from sinning if they the ahlul kitab had believed in allah in the nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what was revealed to him they would never have taken them the other kuffar as friends however many of them are sinners disobedient and will not accept islam we have to be careful with whom we are being friends with so we have to choose our company wisely a muslim can be a friend of a non-muslim but he has to be careful uh, whether or not that non-Muslim is influencing or affecting the character of a Muslim. So we have to be strong in our faith and our uh, actions and in our, uh, in our character overall so that we could affect others in a positive manner rather than be affected by others in a negative manner. It is uh, common that when you are spending time with other people, uh, some of the traits of those people will also reflect in your own character. But uh, the thing is that it depends upon the strength of your own personality, whether you are strong-willed and strong-minded or not, whether you are easily influenced or you are able to influence others in a, in a positive manner and bring a change through practical example. It is up to you. Now, how can we strengthen our faith? One of the ways to strengthen our faith is uh, performing the Salah properly on time, remembering Allah uh, with meanings, understanding the meaning of what we are saying, uh, reciting the Quran with understanding, and uh, trying to study the seerah, the life of the Prophet uh, and his companions as well. So all of these actions strengthen our faith 
and we have to be certain without any doubt that Islam is the truth and how can we be certain of that first of all we have to learn Islam in a proper uh, in a proper manner secondly we can compare the society today which we are living in with the a true Islamic society which we are able to read in the books uh, what is the difference between that society and this one uh, what implications are there when humans are just uh, following their desires desires blindly what is happening in the society today because of this uh, individual individualistic and uh, secular approach towards life when people are, are only caring of their own desires and wishes and uh, they are caring of their own happiness and whether that kind of happiness which they want to achieve does it harm their soul does it harm their body and mind or is is, is it not harmful uh, so a person who is using drugs he can also claim that i am being happy by using drugs but but he is in reality harming his life harming his relationship with others his body his health so that is not a true happiness we can which can damage your body which can damage your health and relationships eventually it will it will lead uh, that person to a disaster so we have to uh, observe our society and and the life which we are living in very closely and carefully and then see the wisdom behind any action or any uh, the teachings of islam and then we will come to a conclusion that islam is the final answer it is the truth and it is the solution to all the problems which we are facing today when we realize this fact then our faith will become stronger and stronger in our way of life and when our faith will be strong then automatically we will be strong-willed and we will not be easily influenced by others are you getting my point afwan all right Okay, so inshallah, meet you on Monday. Wish you best of luck. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.